Hey y'all, what's up? This is Ron Wills back at you with yet another couch video. I might keep these and stuff because I don't have to pay attention to the road or anything. But anyway, value systems and relationships. And this is connected with the one I was talking about with social class yesterday because, hey look, now I know I'm famous for talking about the body game and all of that. I'm going to stick talking about it. I'm going to stick to that. But I've also said that's the foundation. And of course, I've talked about having charisma, being masculine. That's the foundation. I'm just talking about attraction. And it's something that could be applied to every social group, every social class, right? And the, what I'm about to talk about now. But a big part in relationships uh, other factors. In fact, I did a, a on-demand video that I talked about this before. It was called Race, Class, Culture, Religion, and the Game. And a link for it is in the description box. And this is old because this is a very important factor. See, one of the things in this space, I'll focus on just the basic things because they do cross across uh, boundary lines. Like women on all cultures going to check out your body, right? They're going to check out your body. I don't focus on the face as much, but that's a part of the body. They're checking out your whole physical form. Women across cultures are affected by, you know, how much charisma you have, how personable you, you are, how can you connect. And the masculine thing, that's, that's across all species. <laughs> that's across all species. It's because it's a primal energy, right? But then... As you deal more and more, you start breaking down other things. Because, yeah, okay, say a woman sees you, right? You know, you got you look nice to her. You handsome, muscular, or whatever body type she like. And, you know, you got some charisma. It's cool and everything, right? And even masculine. And you know what? That might be good for a one-night stand or some brief fling or something. But when you're talking about relationships, you got to think. Women also want to connect men. You men and women really want to connect on a long-term basis. Yeah, we got some folks out there anti-marriage and stuff, but if you look at the majority of the population, they want to connect on all levels. So this go beyond just the basic sexual hookup. We also gotta be talking about just relationships in general. Now, this is something I don't really get into like just overall relationships on this channel, but I'm gonna need to. Because if I, when you look at my background, yeah, I was known for writing the books, telling men how to self-develop, you know, telling the men how to self-develop. And I'm just going to throw it out there. Been saying it since the 90s. But then, okay, fine, you get that woman. Then what? What brings that into a relationship? Y'all can only spend so much time in the bedroom, right? Okay, so outside the bedroom, now what? And in fact, that's why a lot of relationships will mess up. Yeah, they go in the bedroom, but when you come outside, everything else comes in there. Like, what are the value systems? Like, on a basic level, you could have a wealth consciousness, but she has a poverty consciousness, or vice versa. That could be a problem. And this is going beyond just the social class, because even in social classes, people going to have maybe different value systems, right? Uh, people who follow me a long time know I've studied uh, subcultures since the mid nineties, when I was introduced while working in government to the deaf community. And they actually have a culture, a language and everything. And ever since then, I paid attention to different subcultures. That makes a difference, right? You could be like, a, like one time I was doing a, a speech. I was doing a, conducting a workshop at a, a new age expo. It was, I think this was 2005. I was actually taking the place of uh, this uh, African traditional priest. He asked me to go in for him and take care of it. I was like, okay. You know what I'm saying? I was in there and I remember we had, there was a couple in there. There were a couple of goths. And I was talking about how, you know, people will hook up. They look for somebody who's similar to them, who's kind of a reflection of their, uh, you know, their sexual id or animal or animus, if you want to use those ter terms from uh, Carl Jung, right? And these two look, when I said that though, they looked at each other, they were, they, they bust out laughing and everybody else did. And they were like good natured and everything, but you could see the similarity. But the thing was, they were in the same subculture. That's a, that represents a value system, right? That represents a value system. Another value system 
you know, it could be you work out. Like I did a video a couple of days ago, last week, one of my past videos where I said, um, yeah, it was a couch video, where I say dimes prefer men who are built a certain way. Or men who look like, and I say specifically dimes because I said they work out. But it's more than just the aesthetics and raw attraction. It's the value system. There's certain values that somebody who's constantly working out, they're going to have. So if you get a woman, or a man for that matter, who's working out all the time, and they meet somebody who don't want to work out, well, you know what? They might like each other, even have some attraction. But once you get past the bedroom, you're talking about relationships. Shoot, they, they it's going to be found something lacking. And that's really how many couples break up the value system. And it could be, you know, it could be people who like art. It could be uh, they're in a, a subculture that uh, values writers. It could be a poetry subculture. I mentioned before, uh, was it here? Some, I got so many things all over the place, but I used to go to a lot of open mic poetry sessions and stuff just to chill out. But that was a little subculture. So that plays a role. It was like, okay, the people in there get along. Because you'll notice people not only stick generally within their class, but they stick within uh, things that they value. So they'll stick in the same subculture. They'll look for a mate in that subculture. Or even, um, I'll use the I'll use, uh, African-American community specifically. You have uh, groups that people uh, disparagingly call hoteps. But I notice people in those communities tend to make with somebody who reflects that value. Now, outsiders might be like whatever, but that's what they're looking for. Or if the value is the person's vegan, the person is vegan. Some vegans are hardcore too. Shit, you be around them and stuff and you know, you just want to get that cheeseburger or something. You'd be feeling like, oh, damn, I can't eat this. Imagine rum. I was like, damn, I can't eat a... These buffalo wings around. Thankfully, and I got I got the pictures on IG to prove it. I, I don't have a problem with vegan eating anyway. I don't have a problem with it. Can't give up those buffalo wings though. But anyway, but that's a value system. That's a value system. Another value system, something that we don't talk about in this space and it's not talked about religiously, except for dating coaches or relationship uh, counselors or uh, matchmakers who specialize in the area of religion. Like with the Christian path, there's a lot of people there that's focused on getting Christian singles together. But that plays a, that plays a thing. Because if you're talking about a relationship, there's, some, there's, there's a lot of problems if y'all both worshiping deity different ways. Trust me. Yeah, y'all might have some sexual attraction, but then that might even affect who a, a woman would even get with. Because I know some women now, young women, if you ain't saying like you going to church like five times a week like them and talking about your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they won't give you any. Because one of my favorite young ladies, I call her my little baby girl. She's like that. I always, I always mess with her. I say, yeah, you're going to be a first lady, ain't you? She said, yeah, mom, I might be a first lady. All right, tell the guys, if yeah, he better look like a church boy. She, anybody don't look like they're a church boy, she won't mess with them. But that's her value system, Right? And that's very important because you'll find a lot of people, if they Muslim or, you know, you got, uh, you know, since it's mostly, mostly African-Americans who watch this channel, though I got people from all over the world, there's a strong comedic community. There's a, there's a strong comedic, people don't talk about it, or people are ATRs, they want to know somebody who's, uh, and that's African traditional religion, they want to know somebody they can talk about Shango with, or, you know, Ifa. You know, the EFA system or whatever. You know, like them. Depending on where they're from. Depending on the path they are. You know. You know, I find another duck. You know. Anyway, check it out. Not that too. Then check it out. So, you know, somebody want to know that. You know, that's a value system right there. You know. That's a value system right there. And that, that plays an important part. You got to think about it. Yeah, yeah, you can get the tight stuff. You know, you looking good and all of that. But even then, it might affect it. Somebody might still say, well, hold up, you know. I need to see what else is up. And that's including the class. Like, all of those things come into the mix. 
Like somebody, you know, a lot of times they ain't thinking, you know, like I, I'm going to say this since it's mostly guys watching it. That woman's going to have all that stuff on her mind. Like, like I said, you might be, shoot, you might be an alpha showpiece. But shoot, if you don't, hey, if you don't have on, uh, you know, some uh, garb that suggests that you're Muslim or something, she might be, uh, yeah, he's all right till that. <laughs> you know, or if you talk about going someplace, you ordering the pork products, they might be, uh, but that's normal. And that's normal for men too, a man with any sense. A man with any sense ain't gonna just grab a woman. A sensible man, some some bum dude, some lame dude, they might grab whoever they can get and try to convert them. But the smart man is gonna be like, oh, wait a minute, this is my values. Are you following? The sovereign man is gonna do that. He's gonna be looking at all of that stuff. And that play, all of that plays an important part. All of that plays an important part. Hard. That's you. You got to keep that in mind. All right. You got to keep all of that stuff in mind. It's like, and because you know, we gotta get deeper. Is it? You know, some people say, well, if you just present yourself as high value, high value in what way? You know. You know, um, one high value woman might be saying, hey, you need to follow this religious path. Another woman might look at a guy as high value because, you know, at the clubs and stuff, he can cut a rug. You know, another woman might say, oh, you know, she going to biker week or something. And, you know, she valued men who live that lifestyle. The bikers, you know, they doing all that stuff. The women, you know, they born the back. That might be high value, you know. So it's like you can say in general, yeah, they looking for somebody who's looking good and stuff and got a certain amount of charisma and masculinity. But then it's still going to be filtered through their value system. That cultural thing. In fact, some cultures, depending on what it is, even what they consider good looking might be totally different. You might be totally different or healthy. You know, like uh, I'll, I'll use the vegan thing again. If a guy looking too well fed, the woman might be like, mm, I don't look like he'd be watching what he eat. You know. Because there's a tendency, especially in vegan communities or raw food communities, men tend to be more body weight slim. So, you know, all of these things. So what they consider good looking might be different. And then uh, I mentioned uh, like the disparagingly called whole tough community. Shit. You know, women might they can't get away with that weave the same way. Because the men are like, oh, pfft, no. Nah. And shoot, even complexion and colorism is a different is a different vibe in those communities. And shoot, I ain't even going I ain't even gonna get into the growing tantra communities, how they looking at uh, each other. But that's still a value thing, right? So it's something to consider if you want to just get a better idea of it. Like I said, I got a link to something I already did before. And you gotta look at all those things. It's never, you know, it'd be nice. <laughs> If you say you can just show up and you see somebody you like and don't matter what your social class is and all of that, but we got to get real with some stuff out here. We got to get real with some stuff. And it could be limited just on a relationship just with that. Just with that. Seriously, you could have two people, but they could be have a ton of attraction to each other. But if they do something just simply as just worshiping uh, deity differently, it's... <sighs> It could be, it could cause a whole lot of problems. Because, you know, one might be like, well, you know, I'm waiting to get married. Or we got to do this and that, you know. Or another one might say, hey, we got to get some readings done to see if we're even compatible. And then others might say, oh, no, scientifically, let me look at your credit score. That could be a value, too. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> like it's a value system. So we, we always got to look at those things. So anyway, yo, wanted to share that. And like I said, I'm gonna start it because it's. Let's just say I take things to a level that I hadn't done as much here because usually I charge out money for some of the deeper stuff. But I'm gonna start throwing out some of the deeper aspects, the social aspects, very important thing, you know. And uh, you know that social thing even affect where you live. You go to different cities; they got depending on. Uh, what the cities are good for or known for, you're going to get different vibes, different energies, different what they consider attractive. You might have one city that 
it was dominated by a manufacturing plant. You know, and in fact, a lot of cities might have changed, have changed, have changed. That might have, have changed because maybe the major plant or economic engine moved overseas or something. So that changed how women looked at the men, how men looked at the women. Whereas another, like in the DMV area, that's the federal government economy. That's a power thing. And you got many companies that have stuff here. That's why it's a very rich area. But it's because it's more of an intellectual thing. So what people would consider attractive is different than, say, maybe a strictly blue collar area. So all and all of these things come in there, even with the dominant spiritual practices in that area. Everything comes together. So you got to look at all of this stuff. So anyway, that's it. I'm going to put that, I got to put that on my little notes stuff to talk about. I got like a little list of general things I'm going to talk about. I have to add that one. So anyway, uh, that's it now. I'll get back with y'all later. Have a great weekend. Peace.